Hey guys, here's a closer look at my Jackson Model TVG2 television signal generator. It's a combination sleep generator and marker calibrator. Very similar to my Hickok 615 and Ico 369 hiding up there. All of these essentially do the same thing. They sweep the frequency you dial in here and they output a fixed frequency that you dial in here. This will show up as a blip on the response curve that you get by sweeping the frequency as indicated here. The, <laughs> the interesting difference with this model though is that this uses a mechanical device to sweep to frequencies. It's sometimes called a wobulator. Whereas all my other sweep generators are electrical. So, well, there's actually a motor in here uh, that drives a variable capacitor. It's kind of like there's a device doing this. So, for example, if you got this set on one megacycle and you dial this into 10, internally it's going to sweep about half a megacycle to either side of that 10 megacycle, so 9.5 to 10.5. And, and then on your scope, you'd see there was some kind of response curve from 9.5 to 10.5, and, and you'd see a pip or a little blip on the trace wherever this might be dialed into. I got this on eBay a few years ago. It's in really good condition, however, uh, when it was shipped, the glass on the right side cracked. Bad enough, I had to remove it, whereas the side's in good shape. Uh, it seems to be okay. Uh, the paint got scratched a little bit, which is kind of a shame, because it's one of the most distinctive features of this. This is really bold white print on the uh, dark blue background. I don't blame the seller. Uh, he shipped it pretty well. I think just the UPS guy kicked it in the right spot to break the glass. So. Oh well. So also, oh sorry, this thing is really heavy. There's also been some modifications. There's some BNC jacks on the back here. He told me that these were to allow you to hook up a frequency counter to check the uh, the marker generator and I think the sweep um, just to ch to check them for accuracy and calibrate them. We'll see. I say we'll see because I've actually never opened this up. I did plug it in and play around with it and it was a little bit wonky. Uh, certain frequency ranges it would just stop working and it didn't seem to be sweeping correctly so I'm kind of curious to see what's up. Uh, regardless though I will be putting this into storage because it's just too big and heavy and I've got other sweep generators that work better but before I do I really want to take a closer look at it. I do have the manual for it. It's a photocopy but it's still pretty legible. So, it, uh, and it goes into quite a bit of detail about how it works and what you can do with it and, uh, and so on. And at the very back is a schematic. And on that schematic, if you look close, there's a device right there, M1. That is the wobulator motor. Um, I've never seen one up close, so I'm really curious to crack this open and see uh, how that looks. Because it doesn't look to me like there's a whole lot of components to this, but this is a pretty huge and rather heavy cabinet. So I expect there's some fairly elaborate stuff going on inside. Uh, in terms of shielding and, and uh, the coils and so on. So uh, enough talking. I'll grab a screwdriver and pop this open and let's see what's really in there. Okay, I've removed all the screws from the back cover, and boy, are there a lot of them. So, time to pop this open for the very first time, and who knows what we'll find inside. Looks to be copper plated. It's always a nice sign. Well, I can clearly see where the two jacks were wired in here. Wow, this, this whole thing is sure is copper plated. Very cool. Oh, here's some more bits of broken glass from that dial and more packing foam that worked its way inside. Well clearly it's been worked on. There's some new orange drops down in here and these are probably newer caps. Looks like you had to double some up here to get the right value. Same with these power resistors. Same here, so, hmm. If I was going to use this in regular service, 
I think I would go over these all again and probably try to find a single cap with the right value and get rid of these parallel guys here. Huh, even the potentiometers are encased in shields. This is this is quite well made. I've noticed this in a lot of vintage uh, test equipment that they put a lot of effort into the shielding and the layout. I guess they kind of had to as compared to more modern stuff where it's all inside of uh, integrated circuits and so on. Which is why I like this stuff. It's big, it's heavy, but I think it was just really, really well engineered. Very clever designs. Well, no signs of the wobulator, so let's see. Which side is which? Now this side is the variable sleep generator. So I would expect the wobulator is inside this guy somewhere. I'm not sure how to get it open. There's screws on the bottom, but I can't get at those very easily. This guy has a port on the back panel here. Well, I'm not sure what that's about. Just a, a wire here off the power transformer that goes to nothing. Hmm. Well, I'll keep digging. I can get this panel off easy enough. I'll see if I can get this cover off somehow. It turned out that the way you get the chassis all exposed is to remove all the screws in the front as well. And then the whole center portion of the cabinet just uh, comes away. So here we are. Finally we can see some tubes in here. There's a big power transformer. And this, I do believe, is the wobulator device. Looks a lot like a permanent magnet speaker. So this would be the magnet side, coil here, and on the other end, well, some type of device inside there behind those coils and resistors. One unfortunate thing is that although all this is copper plated, the inside of this is and the back is, this front is really rusty. I don't know if this wasn't plated or the plating wore off or whatnot, but geez, it's uh, <laughs> it's quite bad. So I'm tempted to actually remove everything and take this uh, and uh, at least put some uh, rust inhibiting primer on it before I put this away into storage. Uh, so now that I got it open, I'm going to do some uh, quick checking on the resistors and check the tubes and then uh, fire this up and try to show you what it can do. Here's the port that I opened up. This is the side that does the marker generation. You can see all the trimmer caps and coils up in there for the various ranges.